What is Steel Curtain? Steel Curtain is a steel roller coaster located at Kennywood in Pennsylvania, USA. The ride opened to the public featuring the most inversions on any roller coaster in North America, nine in total. If you're familiar with where Kennywood is located, near the town of Pittsburgh, you might recognize the attraction's name, theme, and aesthetic. All were the result of a collaboration with NFL football team, the Pittsburgh Steelers. In fact, the design of Steel Curtain has been directly influenced by both the history of roller coasters and the history of the surrounding area. Pittsburgh itself is a significant city in regards to Pennsylvanian history. Thanks to its many rivers, the city became a port in the early 1800s, shipping products to the states in the west. A whole range of factories opened up along the rivers, including one of the region's most famous steel tycoons. By the late 1800s, Pittsburgh had become the leader in steel production, with its 14 steel factories producing close to 75% of the nation's total output. As a result, Pittsburgh was given the nickname, the Steel City. Skip forward several decades to the 1930s and Art Rooney was beginning to establish an American NFL football team in the very same city. In 1933, he submitted an application to the NFL to create a franchise and later that year, his new football team debuted. Originally, Rooney's team was named the Pittsburgh Pirates, leeching off the popularity of the similarly named baseball team. However, in 1939, Rooney wanted a fresh start and a brand new name. A contest was held in the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, which led to the name Steelers being chosen, a reference to the city's steel industry. Many years later, in the 1970s, the Pittsburgh Steelers found themselves in a bit of a winning streak. The team's defensive squad were credited as being the force that led them to win multiple Super Bowls, causing them to be nicknamed the Steel Curtain in the process. The Steel Curtain was a force to be reckoned with, and would go on to leave a lasting legacy for the Steelers. Only a few miles away, at the very same point in time, Kennywood Amusement Park was building a new ride. Logjammer, an aerodynamics log flume, opened to guests in 1975, featuring a unique spillway drop. While on the other side of the United States, aerodynamics were also constructing the world's first modern-day looping roller coaster. In the very same year, the company debuted Corkscrew and Knott's Berry Farm, the world's first modern-day roller coaster to feature two inversions. Naturally, this sparked other parks to build similar, bigger rides. A year later, Arrow built Corkscrew at Cedar Point, a ride that featured three inversions. From here on out, Aerodynamics would become responsible for constructing rides with an ever-increasing number of loops for a whole range of theme parks. The late 1980s saw the amusements manufacturer debut what they called the Mega Looper, a large-scale roller coaster that broke not only inversion records, but height and speed records too. Vortex at Kings Island became one of the world's tallest roller coasters and the first to feature six inversions. In 1991, Kennywood themselves would join this trend, constructing a mega looper of their own. Steel Phantom opened to guests as the world's fastest roller coaster, featuring the world's longest roller coaster drop at the time. On top of this, it also boasted four inversions as well as major terrain utilization. Sadly though, aerodynamics weren't always known for building smooth rides. By the late 1990s, Steel Phantom had become unbearably rough and uncomfortable, causing ridership to decrease rapidly. As a result of this, Kennywood originally planned to close the ride at the end of the 2000 season. However, instead, the park commissioned Morgan to redesign parts of the roller coaster, removing the inversions and making the experience more enjoyable. As a result, Phantom's Revenge opened to great reviews in 2001. Fast forward to 2017 and the park's log flume, Log Jammer, was removed due to its old age and to make room for a future new expansion. At this point in time, Kennywood had been producing an assortment of concepts for a new, major roller coaster. The park earmarked Log Jammer's old site as the plot of land for this upcoming ride. Several roller coaster manufacturers designed attractions for the area, but it was ultimately SNS Sansei Technologies that would go on to catch the eye of the park's directors. To remain within the tight space and still provide a thrilling experience, SNS designed a ride which took advantage of height. It used a steep 50 degree lift hill to climb high quickly, while multiple parts of the attraction's layout utilized the same support structure, further saving space. On top of this, from the start of the project, Palace Entertainment, the parent company of Kennywood, were interested in breaking the inversion record in North America. 
However, they also wanted a ride that could be enjoyed by the masses, something comfortable and re-rideable. To create this, the designer of the roller coaster, Joe Draves of Ride Centerline, took inspiration from a range of other attractions. One of the most notable elements of Steel Curtain is its inverting drop, set to be inspired by Drakenfire, a previous aerodynamics looping coaster located at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. Drakenfire featured its first inversion, a corkscrew built straight into the design of the first drop, like Steel Curtain. Draves also looked to other rides at Kennywood to inspire the choice of elements for the new coaster. He noted that Skyrocket, the park's launch coaster, features a thrilling zero-g roll. As a result, his design didn't include one. Furthermore, to ensure the ride wasn't too intense, Draves also incorporated calmer sections into the layout, giving guests a chance to breathe between the multitude of inversions. Impressed with the ride, Kenny would sign the contract with SNS in 2017. Though Steel Curtain's layout had been designed, its theme was still in question. The idea of the Pittsburgh Steelers entered the discussion during meetings about the new attraction. Being located near Pittsburgh, locals that visit Kennywood would have a connection with the team and the park thought it could be a unique collaboration. They got in contact with the Steelers and secured a deal with the team, making it the first major collaboration between an amusement park and sports team in the world. As a result of this, Steel Curtain and its surrounding area pay homage to the Steelers and the game of football as a whole. Firstly, the ride's name, Steel Curtain, is a reference to the team's iconic defense back in the 1970s. While the ride's two trains each feature a different number on the front car, 19 and 33, a reference to 1933, the year in which the Steelers was originally founded. On a more broad scale, the roller coaster's color scheme matches that of the team, while the headrests on each ride vehicle resemble footballs. Though, initially, these details weren't revealed to the public. Instead, Kennywood began to tease their new ride in June of 2018, starting with the codename Project 412. Over the next few weeks, the park slowly began revealing numbers relating to their new attraction. Things like 220, the height of the ride in feet, or 9, the amount of inversions featured during the layout. Finally, on the 19th of July 2018, Steel Curtain was revealed to the public. Kenny would announce their partnership with the Steelers, the new for 2019 roller coaster, and the brand new three acre football themed area of the park, Steelers Country. In addition to Steel Curtain, the park planned to open the End Zone Cafe and the Steelers Experience, a one of a kind indoor multi level training facility with Steeler themed activities. In the time immediately after the reveal, construction was running smoothly. However, 2018 turned out to be one of the wettest years the area had seen in ages, preventing aspects of the construction slowing down progress. During the build phase, the team also discovered problems with the wind 200 feet up in the air. This once again slowed down construction, delaying the ride further. Though, on the 13th of July 2019, a year after it was formally announced, Steel Curtain opened to guests. But, what does a ride on this record-breaking roller coaster actually look like? Once guests have navigated through Steelers Country towards the attraction station, the experience begins. Riders are greeted by the voices of Bill Hillgrove, the former Steelers play-by-play -play broadcaster, and color commentator Tunch Ilkin as they spill the ride's safety and boarding instructions. There's the whistle, Billy! The kick is up and this one is underway! Riders are told to place their terrible towels, loose articles, in the bins before players, the riders, take their position, seat, on the field, train, and are checked by safety officials, ride attendants. Visitors then board one of two ride vehicles, both of which feature six cars, seating guests in two rows of two. This leads to a total of 24 riders per train. Once they're ready, the ride begins. Guests slowly begin to climb the 50 degree lift hill. The trains rise 67 meters, 220 feet into the sky, making Steel Curtain the tallest roller coaster in the state of Pennsylvania. Before they have time to look across the park, guests are already traversing the ride's first inversion. The trains dip towards the ground and whip through the fake out inverting drop, raised 60 meters, 197 feet above the park below. In fact, this element of Steel Curtain currently holds the record of the highest inversion in the world. Though, it isn't long before guests plummet face first towards the ground, reaching their top speed of 122 km per hour, 76 miles per hour. 
The trains then bank left and begin to enter a banana roll over the ride's lift hill in versions number 2 and 3. Guests fall towards the floor, speed over an airtime hill and complete a sea serpent roll in versions 4 and 5. The trains then navigate a second airtime hill, followed by in version 6, a dive loop towards the lake below. A straight piece of track later, and riders enter a Top Gun stall in version number 7. The trains then traverse a step up into in version 8, a corkscrew, before completing a downward bank turn to the right. The ride comes to an end with in version 9, a cutback, followed by a quick upward left hand turn into the final brake run. During the 53 second experience, measured from the top of the lift hill to the final brake run, guests navigate 1,219 meters, 4,000 feet of track. Fortunately for Kennywood, it seems that their first new roller coaster in 9 years has been a success. In fact, the ride went on to win the Golden Ticket Award for the best new roller coaster of 2019. This was good news for the park's parent company also, Parquet Renudos, as Steel Curtain and the Steelers country as a whole was their biggest investment to date. Though sadly, delayed construction and recent events meant that the Steelers experience is still yet to open to the public. Nevertheless, Steel Curtain itself is an impressive ride. Upon debut, it became one of the biggest roller coasters ever built by SNS Sansei Technologies and marked the return of large scale inversion based roller coasters to North America. Would you like to see more rides like Steel Curtain be built in the future? Let us know in the comments down below. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you all next time. A big shout out goes to everyone supporting me over on Patreon, including Matt Rozak, Eith Abukab, Colorful, Tom Bull89, Jack Broadhurst, Rack Hudson, and Urso Brando.